Hey parents, listen up. It's no secret that teenagers are moody at times, right? <laughs> Here's what I want to talk to you about. When are a teen's mood swings a sign of something more like mental illness? I'm Jeff Yaldin. In my 30 years of specializing in teen mental health and suicide prevention, and I don't want to alarm you, but I want you to understand that mental illness is more common in teens than you might think. But many types of mental illness are treatable, but it's just a matter of pinpointing the diagnosis. On that note, I want to say this. I'm not a fan of trying to diagnose young people. Rather, I think the more important question is, how can we treat the symptoms? So I want to share with you six facts about mental illness in our teens that parents should be very aware of. Physicians. Physicians define mental illness differently than most of us do. Here's what physicians look at. They look at a specific criteria in order to determine if a person has a mental illness. I feel this criteria is not up to date with mental health today, so I want to caution you to proceed slowly if your doctor does diagnose your teen. Maybe get a second opinion. Also, know that your child will take your lead in how you respond to what the doctor might say. So please don't react and understand your child can lead a healthy life even if they're living with mental health conditions. Hey, it's okay to not be okay, but what I like is that you're doing something about it by visiting the doctors and starting to get some answers. And for a person to be diagnosed with major depressive disorder, physicians generally look for depressed mood or a lack of interest in hobbies or recreational activities. However, in teens, these signs may show up as maybe a change in their grades, a disinterest with friends, or out of character irritability. So if at least one of those symptoms is present, additional criteria are, are assessed. Also, five out of the following seven symptoms are required for a diagnosis. And that includes changes in sleep, a new onset of guilt, changes in their energy level, changes in concentration or task completion, changes in appetite, changes in motivation, thoughts of suicide. Before thoughts of suicide, I want to encourage you to look for self-harming behaviors such as reckless behavior, cutting, self-medicating, burning, maybe pulling their hair. In short, I want you to understand that if your teen has experienced five of those symptoms nearly every day for at least two weeks, then your child might be diagnosed with major depressive disorder. My friends, here's the deal though. I don't want you to have to memorize those seven symptoms I just talked about, no. Rather, if your teen is showing, let's just say red flags, that is the indication that you as a parent need to intervene and act upon that. Here's the first thing I would recommend you do. Have a non-judgmental conversation and listen to your child's heart. Validate their thoughts and feelings. Make them feel safe, comfortable, and at ease. Don't try and fix it. Don't try and tell them how they should be acting. Be non-judgmental. Listen. Compassionate listening. Then, here's what I would do. I would call your primary care doctor or maybe even school counselors and find out what references that they might have. The lesson here, very simple. If your teen has occasional episodes of anger or stays out late sometimes, it's probably not a reason to be too worried. Everything's okay. On the other hand, if those feelings persist and there are other unusual symptoms, well, that's probably a good idea to talk to your doctor. Do not be that parent that self-diagnoses their child. Take all signs seriously. Let me share you some types of mental illness in teens. The most common mental illness in teens are generalized anxiety. That's excessive worry about everyday matters. Social phobias, like severe feelings of self-consciousness and insecurity in social settings. Depression, persistent feelings of sadness or anxiety and or this feeling of emptiness. 
Let me tell you what I see every day in teens. Anxiety, stress, feelings of being overwhelmed, feelings of being alone, a disappointment, a burden. Also, young people are really stressing about what is my purpose in life? Here's what I tell them. Your purpose is very simple. You wake up, you get up, you dress up, and you show up. Most people don't even show up on time, but you show up with a growth mindset and you're engaged. You do that every day, I think everything's gonna be okay. Nonetheless, let's get back to what I was talking about. Warning signs of mental illness in teens vary depending on the condition, okay? For most young people, one of the telltale signs is gonna be a decline in their grades. There are other warning signs as well. Changes in social habits, including pulling away from school or their friends, activities that they once enjoyed participating in in the past. Well, that could be another warning sign that things aren't okay. Generalized anxiety, social phobias, and depression. Also, they have their own unique symptoms. Let's talk about that. Symptoms of generalized anxiety disorder include feeling restless, wound up or on edge, becoming fatigued easily, struggling with concentration, experiencing irritability, feeling muscle tension, having difficulty keeping worry levels under control, struggling with sleep, such as difficulties falling asleep or staying asleep, or not feeling well rested. Social anxiety disorder symptoms include feeling very anxious at the thought of being around others and struggling to talk to other people, experiencing extreme self-consciousness and fear of humiliation or embarrassment, rejection or offending people, worrying about being judged, feeling anxious days or even weeks ahead of a certain social event, Avoiding places where other people will be struggling to make and keep friends, blushing, sweating, or trembling around other people, experiencing nausea among other people that they're with. And also, signs of depression, here's what they include. Feeling persistently sad, anxious, or empty. Experiencing hopelessness or pessimism, struggling with irritability, feeling guilty, worthless, or helpless, losing interest in hobbies or activities that, again, once used to be enjoyable, struggling with fatigue or lack of energy, moving and or talking more slowly than usual, feeling restless, struggling with concentration, memory, and or decision-making, experiencing unexplained changes in appetite or weight, having thoughts of death or suicide, unexplained aches or pains that don't go away when treated. While at least some of these symptoms generally have to be present for several weeks or months before an accurate diagnosis can be made, my friends, sometimes even just two weeks worth of symptoms is enough to consider making a diagnosis. So a teen's primary care doctor can make that diagnosis. I want to encourage you See your child's pediatrician, family physician first. Their familiarity with your child's medical history can make it faster and easier to reach a diagnosis. As a parent, here's what I want to encourage you to do. Keep a journal of what you're noticing, the days, the times, over a period of time. And by showing that to the doctor, it'll make it easier for the doctor to see things the way they need to see it. Here's what you can expect. During an initial appointment to screen for mental illness, the doctor might ask, what are the symptoms that the teen is showing or displaying? What are the parents worried about? Does the teen have any concerns? If the doctor isn't comfortable making a diagnosis on their own, they can usually recommend a psychologist or a psychiatrist. Again, take all signs seriously, follow through with the process and be patient in the process. Again, let me emphasize that I don't like diagnosing teens. What are the symptoms? And let's look to treat the symptoms first. Another issue I'm seeing with our youth today is lack of coping skills and problem solving skills. Getting a child into counseling or therapy 
might not be a bad idea to learn to cope in healthy ways versus coping in unhealthy ways such as self-harming, self-medicating, reckless behavior. Again, the question I often ask is, if I can give you in a healthy way what you're seeking in an unhealthy way, would you be interested in that? And we say, sure. Let's talk about having someone to talk to. It's okay. Let your child know that adults and counselors and therapists, they're not the enemy. So if they don't learn to speak it out, what they're thinking and feeling, they're going to act it out later in life. Let's try and avoid that and address the issues early. Managing mental health in teens. There is a range of options for treating mental illness in teens. Some of those include identifying stressors, such as not getting enough sleep, skipping meals, or generally lacking a day-to-day -day routine, finding a solution, problem solving, counseling, which is often paired with medications. Now, hold on. Prescribing psychiatric medications like selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, SSRIs, which are commonly used, very safe and highly effective for depression, anxiety, and social phobias. Again, if this is not working well with the teen's chemistry, your child's chemistry, contact the doctor right away, keep the journal, and let's maybe change the medication. But nothing's gonna change if the doctor doesn't know that we need to make a change. That's why it's critical the parents are very invested and involved. And finally, mental illness in teens is more common than people think, but also it's very treatable. Mental illness is preventable. The brain can be rewired. However, in most cases, parents don't bring the child in until after issues have been going on for months and months because they're in denial or they're self-diagnosing their own child. Most parents feel that, well, it can't possibly be what's happening to my child. Okay, another thing. If you're more concerned about your reputation than the well-being of your child, come on, man. I ask you to think about that again. That attitude is part of the problem that we're having and not normalizing the conversation around mental health. Five out of five people have physical health and five out of five people also have mental health. It's okay to not be okay, but it's not okay to not do something about it. Be responsible, my friends, and address issues early. So are you concerned? Well, first thing that I recommend, talk to your team. Then I come up with a plan of action and address it with your doctor or school counselors. And if your teen seems stressed or if there's been a significant change in their behavior, it's best to address it in conversations with them first. It may not necessarily mean that psychiatric diagnosis like depression or anxiety, but it could still be a sign that there's something going on in their life that is acting as some type of stressor. And that's what we have to address, my friends. Thanks so much. I'm Jeff Yalden, jeffyalden.com. Take care.